The eagle has landed, Twitch, like meerkats, we are popping our heads through the tunnels of the internet to come to you Woo. with another session. I'm A.M. Grabelny, a partner solution architect for AWS. I'm joined by the lovely... The lovely Gabe, Gabe Hollenby. Hollenby. Thank you for staying with us, Twitch. <coughs> I'm a technical evangelist with AWS. And the magic in the middle... Yes. Oh, my name is Ralph wow. Capasso. How are you? Hi, I'm a Ralph. lead engineer at MongoDB. Yes. So. I work in the partner network. You all probably know that by now. I've been up here all day. All day. All day. So, all day. the partner network at AWS. We're best friends, right? Oh, of course we are, yes. absolutely. Yes. So I'm partner SA. I work with companies like yours, uh, uh, Mongo. We, we, we heard from Datadog earlier. Uh, I'm really excited that we're showcasing so many of our partners. Uh, so, with Mongo and AWS, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things that I think everybody, or if you haven't used Mongo before, uh, everybody associates with AWS and Mongo is Atlas, right? Correct. We're going to hear about some other cool things too with Stitch. Mm -hmm. But, hang on. But. What? What's Mongo? Let's start what with that. Is what is Mongo? Mongo. What is Mongo? Let's start. Uh, that's big, I know. Yeah, that is true. Mongo is a document database. Okay. Right? It, it takes out all of the difficulties and frustrations that developers had when they used relational databases. Removes a lot of that overhead that it takes to get your app up and running and off the ground. Right, right. And what I particularly have liked about Mongo, as an app dev, right, uh, you may be working with a, a DB team, <laughs> uh, dedicated DB team that maybe you don't. Doesn't do things quickly. Yeah, you know. I said it. I'm, okay. It's all right. Okay. I'm, I'm not accusing anyone there. of anything. <laughs> but as, been a, there. as an app dev, yeah. my next priority is building the next thing, right? Right. And, and a data store is highly important to that uh, in most use cases. Yes, just a, just a little bit, right? That's right. So, uh, you know, maybe I'm not a DB admin, but that was one of my favorite things about picking up Mongo was that it's not really built in the traditional SQL. Uh, you know, I need no. to, to manage a cluster of, 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 you know, an RDS, for example, something like that. You know, Postgres, MySQL, whatever. It, it's more in line of it's JSON all the way. Mm -hmm. It's in line with developer kind of centric ideals. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? How, how was yeah. Mongo developed in that So mindset? Mongo really takes a developer-first approach, right? Okay. And rather than forcing you to jam your data into a certain model, then retrieve it and manipulate it into your application-centric model, and then translate it back and forth, it completely eliminates that, right? You work with your data the way you intend to use your data. Cool. And so, uh, we'll get into Atlas here in just a yeah. minute, and I'm going to give you a segue for that. All right. I love uh, it. I love how you operate. In the same vein of maybe I want to, you know, push off some of that database management. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm trying to write just application code that accesses data. What does Atlas do for me that that makes me not really have to worry about right. maintenance so much? Well, Atlas really takes out all the overhead of ma managing a database, right? You, we're we're all engineers here. We all have really big ideas. I know all I want to do is get my idea, make it a reality, right? So the overhead of even downloading software, setting it up, getting all of it configured, and then finally writing a line of code. Keeping stuff patched. Yeah, checking seems, down, seems logging down security. fairly excessive, right? And then yes. as I want to grow that idea from a small application on my laptop into something bigger, I have to then think about provisioning infrastructure and, like you said, managing patches and version upgrades. And it's, it's like, I want to just make this product, right? Yeah. So if you look at how Mongo was founded, again, it was on the idea that relational databases are very prohibitive a lot of times to innovation. They had their place and they had their time. So out of that, what's the next level of that, right? The next level of that is like, let's take away the management of the database software and let's put it, get it, get it out there so the developers can just launch the database, start working right away, and then let that database grow into an enterprise scale application without much work. And I think you'll see we've automated almost all of that at this point. Right, and uh, we're going to talk about Stitch, too. Let, let's give a little bit of back, uh, background for Stitch. You mentioned when we were talking earlier, mm -hmm. you, used, you used my uh, my wake word, as Gabe describes well, it, well, serverless. Yes. Serverless is AM's wake word. I uh, automatically pay attention as soon as someone says serverless. Like yes. a meerkat popping like up. Like a meerkat <laughs> out of the tunnels of the internet. I appear. Yeah, serverless. Yeah, yeah. So, so what does Stitch have to do with serverless? Well. Stitch is a server, it provides serverless platform, serverless, sorry, 
platform services and it's natively integrated with Atlas, right? So again, continuing on with that hands-free approach. So if our next level was, let's take the management of the database away, the next level is like, let's not worry about provisioning infrastructure to run the app along with provisioning infrastructure to run the database. Let's just run the app, yep. right? And again, let's not worry about scaling that app. Let's just let the app organically scale up or down, right? Which is great and the, for the creating the app phase. It's also great when you're up and running. Let's say we're a store that spikes in December and then is calm for the first few months. Why should we constantly pay a huge amount of cost all year round for That's that? Right. So let's let the application rise to meet the needs and then fall back down. Or maybe it's a proof of concept and you're not yet sure how right. much usage is going to get. Right. Don't pay a big bill while you're waiting for those users to come in. Exactly, and don't worry about upgrading the thing and all of that. And yep. You'll see that because Stitch is natively integrated with Atlas, creating an application end to end, top to bottom, is really simple. You're singing my song, Ralph. All right, well I would sing today, song. but I'm a little hoarse, okay. so we can. <laughs> you Although I'm demo? curious how that me melody would go. Oh, I don't, you know, it's well, just, I left uh, my deep composer off stage. So yeah, <laughs> I'll have to answer we'll that We'll try that later. one. That'll be the next one. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, let's, demo. Let's, let's dive in. So let's just talk about quickly how to launch an Atlas cluster. Maybe okay. I'll zoom in a bit here. So you see this is a display that's going to show all of your clusters. You create a project. Uh, it's really easy to get started. So you click Build a Cluster. You select AWS, of course. Choose the of region course. of your choice. Uh, one thing I'll point out before I go any further is that everyone here, you get a cluster for free for life. You get a cluster, so, you get a cluster. Again, if, you're, if you've never used one. Are you upring? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Maybe I am. OK. Maybe I am. Well, this, this is good then. Yeah. It's only going to get better. For Everybody you know gets that. a cluster. That's right. Everybody gets a cluster. It's free. I'll even give you socks, too, if you follow me to the booth after this. But that's a whole other thing. Oh. Serverless socks. So, serverless socks, of course. So anyway, you pick the tier of cluster you want. Again, we have a free one. We have what we call our shared tiers. And these are, again, free or low volume workflows. These are going to be shared tenant. And then when you grow up to here, we start in our, our uh, M10 and above series, you get a dedicated cluster. This is going to give you a dedicated three node replica set. Nice. We will always run with a three node replica set. We are always highly available. Right? And this means we never have downtime when we do maintenance, ever. Nice. OK. Um, so I'm going to start a little bit higher here just so I can show you some other things. But you go in and you pick your class of system that you want to do. Yep. Now, we have a couple of other families. If you have low CPU needs, but you can pick that. You can go with our general, which is our most common one. Or if you have very high frequency workflows, high, high performance rights, you can go with our direct attached storage, NVMe, which equates to i-series nodes in Amazon. Nice. Cool? I'm going to stick with general. Uh, now again, earlier I said we like to auto scale up or down to meet the needs of your application. So we have scaling of both storage and, uh, and compute power. So here, let's say like, look, I'm doing a big launch. I think I need an M30, but hey, if this thing isn't, you know, it may not need an M30 all the time. Maybe we can go down to an M10, so I'll set a minimum size. And I'll say, look, I'm willing to grow as high to an M as an M100, right? That's like one and a half sticks of dynamite. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, choose, you choose how high or low you're willing to go. Awesome. Uh, and then again, as I mentioned, we have storage auto-scaling, which means when your disk re reaches a certain capacity, it's going to scale higher. Yeah. And you want to buy those sticks of dynamite January 1st. <laughs> yes. They're much cheaper. They're much, much cheaper. cheaper in the new year. Yeah, yeah. You want to wait till after the 31st. Is this another AWS product? Is this AWS a te Dynamite? A Texan pro tip here. This is a Texas pro tip. You go to the, the, the fireworks stands, and uh, those prices are slashed so. January 1st if you're buying fireworks. You need a lot of fireworks. Come talk to me. Keeping you in, uh, in good supply here, straight from the. Uh, so we'll automatically increase or decrease the <laughs> amount of gunpowder that you need to launch your firework. Yep. There right? You go. Depending on the demands of your firework. Wonderful. Uh, we also have the option to provision IOPS. So if you need uh, extra performance on the disk, you can provision IOPS here. Nice. Cool. So we have a lot of other th cool features you can do. You choose your version of MongoDB. Seems pretty straightforward, right? We have uh, multiple backup solutions, though we, we like to encourage you to use cloud provider snapshots. It's very high performance, leveraging your uh, EBS snapshot capabilities. Yep, we also now have recently introduced point in time restore. Ooh, right? We don't have to tell anybody uh, here how important, that's great. how important backups are, right? So I think we can slide down. Wait, just a quick question. What yeah. is the time window for that? How far back can I point in time to? 10 million years. Actually, no, no, off the top of my head. It's 10 million. <laughs> but that's a good question, and I'm sure if any of the backup we can check the are docs. watching, they're like, yeah. it's done. But yes, that is in the docs. Okay. 
So uh, for those of you who have larger workflows, you can start to shard in the larger amounts of data. You can shard the data. Is everybody familiar with sharding here? Or? You can, you, why don't you give a quick baseline okay. for the people yeah. on, on the cool. screen? Cool. Well, let's say you need high performance writes or you have, or you have different data sovereignty requirements, right, of how you want to spread your data. Rather than write, ha writing it to a single cluster yep. you, or a single replica set, you can have multiple replica sets and the data will write depending on how you choose to shard it. So if you say, if you turn on sharding here, you've got to also teach it how it's going to shard? Right. Okay. So that's the key that we always encourage users is to don't blindly shard, right? It might not give you any benefit. Key, you said the key. key. The key to sharding is the, the key. key. Maybe that's deep, or maybe that's too many times of the same word. I don't know. It's keys all the way down. It's a yeah. key, key thing to remember. Right. It's a key with a lot of values. No, I, I don't know. Hi, anyway. that's Sorry. good. Uh, okay, so you choose the key, the key, the, or the most important thing is to choose the proper shard key. See, and now there you go to that term. But uh, for instance, like you wouldn't choose an order ID as a good key, right? Because if you're going to do one to a thousand and a thousand one to it's two thousand, it's always going to it's one always gonna write to one and then to the other. But yeah. let's say we've got a social media site and we're confident that our usernames are evenly distributed alphabetically across, the, you right. know, across the letters. Then you might do like A through H and I through whatever. Or on the next we, could, we could we uh, could run it through a hash, right? A normal just dis normally distributed yep. hash function. Exactly. Take the first five letters or something. But the most important thing is if you do just decide to shard pay really careful attention yes. to your shard key. Yeah, make so sure it distributes evenly. We let you have a minimum of two shards and you can increase that or decrease that. Once you're sharded, you can't go unsharded after that, but anyway. So moving on, we have some other really cool features with Atlas. We have, this is really fun. This is one of my favorites that my team got to work on. Uh -huh. So it's uh, enabling the BI connector, right? So we're well aware that are, there are a lot of really awesome analytics tools out there, whether it be Tableau, ClickView, ClickSense, right, which Amazon has now. Problem is, they don't speak MQL, which is our query language, right? They speak SQL, yep. but they're still great tools. So by turning on the BI connector, we're allowing you to talk to your MongoDB cluster using SQL. Oh, that's super neat. Super it's nice neat. of you to forgive them for only speaking SQL. That's <laughs> it's big of you. We're, we're, we we're here to make the life of a developer easier, right? Thank you. Thank you. We all speak many languages. We all come from a lot of backgrounds with these things. And we're all making new systems and marrying them to old ones all the time, right? I love this. So, I love this. this is so that's what we're for. And you don't really have to, there's no real overhead to launching this. You, you bring it up. Uh, it, maps out your, it maps out your relational version of your schema by analyzing your documents automatically, and, and you're good to go. Sweet. So I'll touch a little bit more on this in a second, but we support customer-managed encryption at rest. So all of our disks are encrypted by default using the, the volume encryption. Sure. However, uh, a lot of our customers are leveraging uh, uh, their provider KMS settings, so AWS KMS being a yep. primary one. Right. Uh, and that allows them to basically control the encryption of the data in their database with their own key. Right, so let's say, for example, you're using that key in this database and some other systems. You have a breach or some emergency. You revoke that key, the access to the data is gone for the yep. database. Right? And then, as we always like to say, the hardest part of launching a cluster is going to be to name, name it. it. I love reInvent. Oh, okay. And we launch, right? And this only takes a few minutes, usually 5, 10, 15 minutes at the tops, right? So at any point in time, you can make any changes you want to this cluster. I'll show you one that's in existence already. But you can see we provide robust monitoring of everything going nice on in your cluster. nice looking UI. Why, thank you very much. You're Shout wild. out to the uh, MongoDB design team. Nice. We do, okay. we do have a world-class design organization, I have to say. It's a, it's a spectacular. They're but great as an engineer. It's a luxury to have a good design organization to work with. Is your design team web scale? <laughs> uh, we are web scale. Stitch is web scale. Stitch is web scale. Atlas is web scale. It MongoDB is. is. Web, web scale. scale. Oh, you heard That's it. That's right. Scale. Exactly. Upscale, web scale, you got it. Scaling the web. We scale up, we scale down, we scale. Cool. I think we've scaled we've that scaled. joke as much as we can. Exactly. So anyway, you have you have you're monitoring here for virtually every metric about the database, its operations, and underlying infrastructure. Nice. Cool. So some other cool features I'll touch on real quick, and then maybe we'll move on to Stitch. Yep. <clears throat> uh, and see some more demos. But here, you're going to need to give access to the to a user in order to get in. Actually, first let's start with the network layer. I'm going to navigate back a little bit. We have a number of ways to interconnect your application to Atlas, right? Okay. First one would be uh, over the internet, right? 
Not first, always a great idea. Well, hold on. Yeah. First, let me remind you that every connection is over TLS, Good. right? Okay. And every cluster you launch is completely locked down from the moment you launch it, right? right. You don't see any entries in That's this right. thing at all. So you can whitelist down uh, to a subnet or IP address. I'll That's just give useful. you an example. Right, do not, we never recommend you click allow access from there anywhere. There you go. So we'll just type, type demo. Another cool feature we have is let's say, hey, like, I got to give somebody temporary access. Yep. There may be there in a coffee shop, for lack of a better place. Ooh, I see. You've got this you nice can, check You box. can actually say, like, look, you know how it is. You give somebody access, and you never remember to turn it off, That's right? That's right. So we have this temporary feature. We can click this. Boom, it counts down. We can make it permanent. We can extend it, blah, blah, can blah. Can we do all this from APIs also? Everything you can do. I'm glad you asked that. Aww. Everything you see in the UI can be done over our public API. Sweet. Wonderful. Cool. So uh, we have that. And then for those who want to peer networks, we support network peering. OK. Right? Okay. So that's great, VPC peering. Yes. And yeah. we just private introduced link. private link support. Yeah. Uh, we nice. go with that Very one, nice. yes. Very nice. Okay. Very good. So that's a shout Wi-Fi out to one of our around. analyst teams for just finishing that up. That, was, that, uh, was, that just that came was. out. So for those of you who don't know what private link is, you want to explain? Well, I'll let you explain. You're going to do a better job than me. <laughs> so it, it lets you access uh, other resources directly through Amazon's private connections and not out through the public internet. Never right. hop to the public internet. Just right. stay on Amazon's so network. It stays, it stays on Amazon's network the whole way, well, until in this case, until it makes a yep. hop over to, to Mongo's servers. Cool. Hmm. Well, and remember, all of these Mongo servers are hosted in the AWS. So, okay, so they're, they're never never thank you for yes. that clarification. Yes, yes. Sometimes we get asked that. Is it our well, own cloud data center? No, no, we're hosting in AWS. Yeah, right. VPC, all, yeah. In, in all in AWS. EC2 and, and VPC. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. <clears throat> so let's take a look quickly at database access. You have to make a user for the people you like. You do have to make a user for the people you like. So I'll make a test one that says demo. Give it a password. And you give it some permissions. Here's some pre-bucketed roles, but nice. I'll show you really quickly how you can make that a lot more granular. Again, you can do the hey, temporary thing nice. with that as well. So we'll make this one temporary. I should also point out that we have different supporting, we support different authentication methods, right? Ooh, okay. So you've got your typical username password. Uh, we also have uh, LDAP support. So you Great. can connect your Active Directory and do single sign-on. I'll show you that in a second. Yeah. Right? Um, <clears throat> we are running a little short on time. I oh. do want us to get to Stitch, too. Oh, so let's do that. Cool. I'll just highlight really quickly. We also just added support for X509 certificate authentication as oh, well. Oh, great. Okay. Okay, cool. Probably the most secure way you could connect. Right. Yeah. So yeah. again, we have some encryption features, database. We also have robust database auditing and things there. So as you can see, you start very small, build this out to meet the needs of your application. Great. Too many features to get through. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know we've grown so much, Good even problem. since I've joined. Yeah. Good problem to have. That, that, so Let's talk about Stitch. Cool. Let's talk about Stitch. So first, I'm going to give it to you in the context of a talk that we did here at reInvent. OK. Right, so we really wanted to do something to, to show how powerful the MongoDB data platform is um, for, with serverless architectures, right? So I think a lot of people view MongoDB as a great database. But a lot of people don't know that we're really a full-blown serverless data platform, right? Yeah. You saw with Atlas, you have a hands-free database, OK? Like, really can keep your hands off and let it grow. No maintenance it's, needed. Exactly. So what we did is we sat down and we, we looked at, like, what's some of the value of serverless, right? Well, it's that a long time ago, you thought of things like machine learning or scanning a large amount of documents and getting text as, like, I have to be in this big company with this giant budget. That's right. So we said, like, what if I was in a small law firm but I wanted to carry out a FBI scale investigation, right? Like, wh how would I do that, right? Serverless lets us do that. So you look at some of the advanced. a whole lot of coffee. Well, that's true too. <laughs> that always helps. But if you look at things like. <laughs> so you're saying I could become like Matthew McConaughey and True Detective all by myself. Oh. I don't need the FBI it, behind just me. That's well, a dark road, my friend. Don't go down there. I thought you were going to say a dark roast. I'm sorry. But that's a I don't know. Anyway, all right, Gary, Gary, Gary I almost on. lost my train of thought, you guys. They're going to give us a half an hour. Do up here. This is our <laughs> kind of Stitch. Our MO. So let's, Stitch. Stitch, let's, let's get back on track. Anyway, so we looked at some really exciting things that Amazon has done, obviously, like break the barrier of entry to a lot of things. Take Amazon Comprehend, for example, right? Yep. 
I can do machine learning with zero machine learning experience. That's right, I, it's already pre-trained models. You give it text, it extracts entities and brilliant. key phrases. So we went back for our talk and looked at the Enron investigation, right? And there's a public, publicly available corpus of emails. For those that don't know, the short of it is, Enron was a super valuable company that engaged in accounting fraud, went, uh, went bankrupt and ruined the lives of a lot of people. Yeah. So it's a very sad story, but we have this corpus of emails. So we said, let's feed this to comprehend and show off this beautiful serverless architecture, right? So you so, did that. So we did that. So we have a little app here, and what we did is we took all these email documents, put them in an S3 bucket, right? Okay. Uh, ran them through Comprehend, took some paper documents, ran them through Textract, another serverless component which extracts text and data yeah, from yeah, scanned documents. Formats, yeah. Yep. Put them now. The beautiful thing is, right? These services, their output is in guess what format? J -j -j JSON. JSON. And so you look and you ask yourself, well, if only there was a database that natively stored JSON format without having to transform the data, right? And if normalize only. It. If only. Hello, MongoDB Atlas, here we are, right? So we're easily able to persist that data right into the database. And we came up with a quick web app and we said, we have Stitch, this wonderful framework. It's really easy to power the ingestion of those documents and it's really easy to host this website. So we have this nice little web app. You see, we extracted all of the entities and key phrases for all of the Enron emails. Right. And kept a tally of how, much, how many times each one occurred. Oh, cool. Right, so we start out, I'm just going to do a quick one, building out a text search. Um, we'll call it Jedi. They love to name things after their Star Wars, after Star Wars things. And then you get results of emails, right? Instance. Oh. So I'm going to show you that too. Full text search that you just saw is now also built into MongoDB Atlas. Oh, nice. It is literally turning so, into index. Okay. We have to give oh, a boy. teaser for the crowd here. We can't show the behind the scenes because we're out of time, but you gave a session here, a breakout session here. I did. That means it's recorded and it'll be it on YouTube. It is recorded and it will Probably be on YouTube. Probably in the next day or so. So if Correct. people want to see that, what should they look for? What, what was the session called? The, it's called Auto Scaling a Serverless App with Amazon Comprehend, Textract, and MongoDB. Okay. And where do I go to get started? with Stitch? You go to stitch.mongodb.com, cloud.mongodb.com, we'll get you to Atlas, and also um, come by the Atlas booth, I'll be there, get some free socks, we'll give you some free AWS credits. Ralph, it's been wonderful. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you for a, a wonderful last stream. Thank for you guys for having me. I really appreciate Twitch, it. It's been a blast to be here. Thanks for staying with us. It's been great. I hope to see you next year, uh, and uh, I'll see you in the meantime. Thank online. you, everybody.